Well, hey everyone, Eric and I are so pumped to be with you today to dive into God's word on a very important topic. Yeah, we're excited about it. We just want to say again, welcome, glad you're here with us mm -hmm. today. And honestly, it's not lost on Joelle and I. This is the important decision that you made to be at church this weekend, either online or in person. So yes, we are so glad you're joining us for week four, week four yeah. of keeping it together. Yes, we are so glad that you are here. And we want to begin today with a question mm. for you. And here it is. Have you ever been in over your head and you didn't see it coming? Think about this for a second. I think all of us have been in this place at one point or another in our life. But how about you, Eric? Have oh. you ever like suddenly been in over your head and you didn't see it coming? If I can only count the amount of times, but there's one <laughs> time specifically I want to talk about today. Yeah. Uh, see, I, I grew up in Western Michigan, right on Lake Michigan, right here. I'm smitten with the mitten right there in Whitehall. <laughs> and honestly, we spent all of our summers swimming and playing in Lake Michigan. But it was this one summer day in middle school. My friends and I were out playing Marco Polo in Lake Michigan with no parental supervision, so that's probably wise. But we played this game Marco Polo. Have you played it before? I have. Yeah, someone yells Marco and everyone yells... Polo. You got it. You got it. So there we were. <laughs> and so that day, playing that game, I decided to actually test some boundaries a little bit. I decided to actually swim out further than I had ever been taught to swim. There's one sandbar. My mom said, don't go past it. I went really far past it. And actually got myself in a little bit of trouble. You see, as the game went on, I found myself so far from shore to the point where my feet could no longer touch the bottom with my head being above water. I had to do that thing where you went to the bottom and jumped up and bobbed for air. And it wasn't a good situation because I started losing a little bit of my energy and my strength. And to make matters worse, all of a sudden it, the wind picked up and waves started crashing over my head. And I was bobbing myself, jumping up to get air, right? I was far from shore. I didn't have enough air and I was losing my energy and things weren't looking very good. Fear was really starting to set in. And then at the next moment happened, actually things went from worse to devastating. Mm -hmm. You see Lake Michigan has this thing called an undertow, which is really powerful. And all of a sudden the undertow started flipping me, a middle school Eric, too far from shore. Oh, no. And it was flipping me upside down as the waves were crashing upon me. And I was scared. Mm -hmm. Like I knew I was in big trouble. I was in, I was in way over my head. And so then again, at this moment, the undertow is taking me and flipping me. But what happened next really did save me is that all of a sudden, as I was being flipped once again, a hand the size of Goliath <laughs> grabbed me by the armpit and yanked me out of the water. And there I was looking at him. His name was Jerry Spofford. I'll never forget it. I was looking at him with water coming out my nose, my mouth, my ears, and I was coughing to regain my breath. I'll never forget what my knight in shining armor said to me. He said... <clears throat> Son, I think you were in over your head, and I think you really need swimming lessons. <laughs> and he was right. He was right. I was in way, way over my head in that, in that moment. I honestly was. I found myself somewhere that I shouldn't have been, but it happened little by little, right? A, a little bit of arrogance, a little bit of competitive nature, a, a little bit of pride, uh, a little bit of middle school stupidity Just led me <laughs> to being somewhere I didn't want to be. And what we're going to actually ask, what we're wondering about you today as you're listening, mm -hmm. is that, has that ever happened to you? Have you ever found yourself somewhere that you didn't want to be, but it was little by little by little that you ended up over your head? Yeah, we're, we're wondering if that's where you're at today. I mean, not literally drowning in a body of water like right. middle school Eric was. And I'm really glad that you're okay, glad by to the be way. Here. But maybe you are experiencing that you're in a place in life right now where you do feel like you're in over your head. And mm. if, you've, if you're in that place right now or if you've experienced it in the past, then you know this to be true, that you didn't get there overnight. But it was more like the day-by-day -day choices, the minute-by-minute right. -minute choices, the step-by-step -step choices that you made that got you to the place that you're in right now. And that's why what we're talking about today is so very important because the little by little choices that we make in our everyday lives really matter. And not just negatively, they right. also matter on the positive end of things. Both sides really matter. Yeah, absolutely. These tiny decisions, right? Yep. We'll even call this the little by little principles in our time together today. And it yep. does impacts all areas of our lives. In fact, we're going to show you just a list here. It is a short list. Actually, th this concept and principle does apply to things outside this list, but just for our time and our purposes today, we're going to talk about this. See, mm -hmm. I think little by little, actually, this mindset, these tiny decisions impacts our parenting, mm -hmm. our fitness, our faith, our jobs, our career, our work, relationships, and even how we view finances and money. 
And I'm just going to kind of touch on a few of these real quick. I actually, I love this idea of little by little actually impacts our parenting. And it is true. If you're a parent, you get this, is that day in and day out, we have an opportunity to instill and parent and raise our kids, right? Whether it's us protecting them from something, us instilling values, us teaching them something. I mean, all these things that we were trying to raise our children, but we know it's day in and day out, little by little, raising them. But then again, on the other side of it, if we don't do any of that day by day and little by little, we will raise monsters, right? <laughs> it's to be true. It's the truth. And then mm-hmm. it also applies to our fitness, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Like if we have a daily workout routine, and we eat healthy and we choose to make daily tiny decisions, we will most likely be physically fit and physically healthy. Mm-hmm. But if we don't work out ever, and if it's not part of our rhythm or routine, and if we make the donuts part of our food pyramid, we kind of know where that leads us. Hey, you need to be a little bit careful there because I'm pretty sure that Pastor Phil eats a donut every single day. Yeah, he actually might even be two donuts, two donuts <laughs> a day. But yes. he works out nonstop. Yes, it works out a lot. Anyway, yeah. but yeah, and then as pastors, we see this third one here come to play, yeah. uh, into play often. It's our faith, mm-hmm. right? We know that if we daily invest in our relationship with God through our devotions, through, through prayer, uh, being in a group, uh, engaging in weekend crossroads services, we know that'll lead to a thriving and flourishing relationship with God. But again, the opposite also applies to this because if little by little, we don't do anything, yeah. Right? We, we don't invest in our relationship with God and we start to drift away from him. We know that we'll find ourselves somewhere we never intended to be. Yeah, this little by little principle just applies to so many areas of our life, both also our work, our relationships, and our money. But what we like to do right now is just have you guess which one of these you think we're going to be diving into together in our message today. So if you're online right now and you want to put in the YouTube comments what your guess is, you can do that right now. If you get it first, Eric's going to send you a $100 Starbucks gift card. Uh, Eric's going to send you a $1 Starbucks (laughs) gift card. I don't think you can buy anything at Starbucks (laughs) for $1. If you're at a campus, go ahead and turn to the person next to you and guess which one do you think we're going to talk about today. I know this wasn't a hard guess, but if you, if you guessed money, you got it right. You win a million dollars plus the Starbucks gift card that Eric's sending you. Okay, you don't actually win a million dollars, but way to go. Yes, we're going to talk about money today because when it comes to keeping it together, it is really important that we tackle the issue of finances. Yeah. And here's why. Because so many of us struggle on a day-to-day basis with our finances. Yeah, don't take our word for it. We actually did the research as well. We actually uncovered some facts that actually might reveal some of you being, or that might find yourselves being drowned or drowning in the waves of your finances right now. Oh, the waves of your finances. I see what you did there. there? Brilliant, Eric. Thank you, thank you. Okay, here's some numbers for you today. Uh, Some stats we did, research. The first one's this, $82,000. That is actually the average student loan debt people are carrying today. Hmm. That if you went to undergraduate or graduate school right now, a majority, that's the average, $82,000 of student loan debt. Mm -hmm. The next number also is uh, telling and and also not great. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's $67,000. That is the average amount of consumer debt Americans are carrying right now Mm -hmm. in 2021. Mm -hmm. Uh, The next uh, number is actually interesting. Is that number four? That is the average number of credit cards the American family has, individual has, that has a balance on it at the end of the month. So not just one or two or three, it's actually four credit cards that have a balance at the end of the month and accrue interest. And here's the last number, and it's the loneliest number, it's the number one. And money, the reason you put that on there is because finances and money and money Mm -hmm. management is still the number one cause of divorce in America Mm -hmm. today. These are some really sobering numbers, but I want to just pause here for a moment on this $67,000 in consumer debt that most people are carrying right now. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about that because I think many of us are struggling with consumer debt. And it's really easy for us to struggle with it because if you're on Facebook or Instagram for more than a minute, one of those ads pops up from something that you didn't even know that you really, really want to have. And it makes me wonder if our phones are listening to us. Do you think our phones are listening to us? Oh, absolutely. Our phones are listening to us. At least my phone is definitely listening to me because before we know it, we've swiped up or we've clicked and we're putting in our credit card number or a thumbprint to buy, you know, the three-in-one charger that you didn't know that you really needed or the car organizer or that sweater that was 75% off on final sale or those little grippy things that you can put on the bottom of your shoes so that you don't slip on the ice. Yeah, interesting. I know you pretty well. I think it's all things that you've purchased recently. Isn't that true? I 
I'm pleading the fifth on this. It was a pretty specific list, and I do really need those grippy things for the bottom right. of my shoes. But you get it. It is really easy for us to unintentionally go into debt, clicking on things and putting our credit card number in. And it is no fun. It is so boring to have to budget for those things right. instead. And so that's how we unintentionally get into all kinds of consumer debt. Yeah, but on top of that, though, there are moments and seasons where we don't unintentionally go into debt. We knowingly go That's into true. debt because we don't want to wait for anything. That's true. Right? In America, we want it. We want it. Now we want it all now. Right? We don't yes. want to have to wait and save for the new house or, or for the new car mm -hmm. or the upgrade on the phone or the new TV. Right? We don't live in a culture that actually uses things until they break and then get them fixed. No, we just buy the next model immediately mm -hmm. so we can have what we want and we can have it. Now, but we got to tell you, I mean, golly, I've seen it and you know, I know you've seen it yes. a ton. Like this leads to just so much tension because people just swipe the credit card and they just pray, you know, mm -hmm. may I just don't drown in payments and interest fees. Like they just do it, but they don't think about where it leads. And I've, I've seen where it's led before. Mm -hmm. You see it leads to, to arguments, relational strife. Mm -hmm. You see families kind of divided and erode over it. Uh, you see individuals have to take on side hustles or second jobs, not to, you know, be strategically saving for the future, right, for a college education or, yeah. uh, you know, an addition on their house or anything. No, but they take these second jobs just to make ends meet yeah. because they won't rise with their finances. And we don't want that for you. Mm -mm. We really don't. And actually, we do believe there's a better way, which is why we're so glad that you're here with us tuning in this weekend. Because we're going to open up God's Word, and we're going to see a powerful principle today mm -hmm. that we believe will help you keep it together financially. Yeah, we're going to be learning from the book of Proverbs today. And so if you have your Bible or your Bible app and you want to turn to Proverbs, we're going to be in chapter 6 to start. But if you're not familiar with Proverbs, let me just tell you a little bit yeah. about it. It's a book in the Old Testament, and it's a really unique book book because it's basically like a compilation mm. of wise sayings, mostly from a guy named King Solomon. And Solomon lived from 1010 to 931 BC. And what he did is he, he studied a lot of things and he also said a lot of very helpful things, these proverbs that are really just helpful, wise teachings that you can apply directly to your life. And in the ancient world, he was basically the source for ancient wisdom literature and yeah. everybody knew it. But what's really cool and unique about the book of Proverbs is that it's a collection of God-inspired wise sayings. Mm. It's the it's the sayings that God handpicked to be in scripture so that we could learn to live wisely in the world that he has created us. So don't just think of it as a book full of good advice, but think of it more as an invitation from God to live wisely in the world that he's created. Yes, we get to hear from Solomon today. Yes, right? we we're do. We're going to do Proverbs 6. That's where we're headed. And what's interesting, not only is the guy incredibly wise, he's going to introduce this uh, actually fascinating uh, creature that usually you and I, we don't like very much, but mm -hmm. he's going to say, no, no, this is the creature you need to learn from. So let's pick it up here in Proverbs 6, verse Six, where mm -hmm. it says this. Take a lesson from the ants, you lazy bones. Learn from their ways and become wise. Well, well, Joel, hold on. <laughs> Take a lesson from what? He is literally telling us that we should study ants, that we should take a look at their annoying little behavior and their lives. And if we do, we will become wise wise. Now that might be very surprising and probably not what you thought you were no. going to learn at church today, but I don't think it's going to be very hard for us to do this because there are ants everywhere. everywhere. In fact, maybe you didn't know this, there are more ants than any other insect on earth. In fact, there are over 10,000 species of ants. Eric, did you know that? Yeah, I know that. I think all 10,000 <laughs> species uh, inhibit my house and my garage every single summer. Right, honestly, they're in my garage, they're on my paver patio, burrowing those little things in between the pavers, which drive me nuts. And sometimes they end up in our house because my daughter and I at times have dropped fruit inside and actually frustrated my wife. Oh, because the ants just, they it go is, right towards the fruit. Oh, it's not good. Okay, but those ants that you're seeing, those yep. little worker ants, they are mostly wingless Females. I just want to teach you a little bit about it. Okay. okay, they're wingless females, and their jobs are to protect the colony and to raise the littles and to forage for food. They're like boss ants, okay? Right. And then the, the ants, they communicate through this system of, of chemicals, and the chemicals help them warn each other when there is danger and point towards resources for food. 
Ants are like very fascinating creatures, Eric. All right, if you can't tell, she really enjoyed researching this part of ants for the message. So fun. This weekend. I mean, honestly, you really did love doing the hard work and research about ants, didn't you? I feel like Solomon asked me to study the ants, and so I did it. You did, you did. <laughs> uh, for me personally, it's kind of all lost on me because all I ever try to do is kill ants. Uh, that's honestly my only initiative when it comes to ants and my only interest. But Solomon's actually saying, no, 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 like you actually have to learn from them and gain mm-hmm. some wisdom from these little buggers. And then he actually takes it a step further in verses seven through eight. Watch what he says here. He says this about ants. Though they have no prince or governor or ruler to make them work, they labor hard all summer gathering food for when? Food for the winter. They do. And ants, they, they get something that, that we don't get. And they, it drives them, what they understand. What they understand is that winter is coming. It's like instinctively they know that they're so small. And so the window of time that they have right. to gather what they need is right now. Right. Ants tackle life's most important tasks little by little. They work today for tomorrow. So what God is trying to tell us through Solomon's wisdom here right. is that we need to pay attention to the ants right. and the lives that they live and the lives that they live. In fact, it's so important that we're going to take a little bit of time out of our message today to show you what the ants do because mm-hmm. I, this is what I think. I think if Solomon could have, he would have put a little YouTube link there in Proverbs 6 oh. that you could click on to see the ants and he he couldn't do that. Technology wasn't available. So, we're going to do it for you today. Yeah, show yeah, here it is. Here's a time-lapse <laughs> video of ants. Now, I'm going to show you this for a moment here. Uh, on top, though, if you're on top of this terrarium, uh, you would actually, from the outside of things, not see what actually is happening here. Yeah. Well, what's actually happening here is fascinating because what we see, and it's happening kind of super fast right now, <laughs> but ants, they do this thing where they take one grain of sand mm-hmm. and Little by little, they move it to another part of their colony. Mm -hmm. And they keep doing this day in after day, uh, day in after day out. And they do these tiny little acts by grabbing one piece of sand and moving to another part of the colony. Then all of a sudden, you get this. Mm -hmm. It's it's an amazing ant city. You have these little ants moving little by little, these tiny acts of faithfulness. And what do you get? Voila, (laughs) an ant city. And it's actually fascinating to us how they are so committed to this process. I think it's so cool. Yeah. And I think that leads us to basically our big idea that we want to talk about today. And this is it. The best outcomes happen when we're faithful little by little. This is the lesson of the ants. It is. And I think I, I think I get it, maybe because I did all the studying on the ants, but <laughs> I get this idea that the things that I do day by day, they add up and they become the outcomes of my entire life. And that's why it impacts kind of everything in my life, including all those things that we had Mm -hmm. on the list earlier, faith and finances and parenting and work. I think it impacts all of that. But here's the key that the ants grasp, I think, that maybe we don't grasp when they're living their little by little lifestyle. The ants understand the concept of delayed gratification. We hate the concept of delayed <laughs> gratification. We do hate it. In our culture, we don't want to wait. Mm-hmm. We don't want for anything. In fact, we want to cancel delayed gratification and we are more about <laughs> instant gratification. Yes. Right, we truly are. And I've, I've seen this happen in two ways recently. I've personally experienced this in two ways <laughs> recently. Uh, one, uh, before, uh, we used to cook in an Anderson household with a crock pot. Oh. Right, we, we used a crock pot and it was very useful, but all of a sudden that wasn't good enough for us. We had to get an Instapot. Oh, yes. Right, because we had to get the food faster. Crock pot, so slow. So slow. We mm-hmm. had mouths to feed and we had to feed them more efficiently and feed them faster. So we had, we had to get the Instapot. Yeah. But also in our lives, we, we recently made the switch and experienced this. See, we used to really be thankful for this thing called Amazon Prime. Right? Do you remember this? Yes, it was so exciting. Free two day shipping. Couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. Blew our minds as something comes so fast for free. But then all of a sudden over time, that wasn't good enough for us. We actually had to have Amazon Prime now. 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 Yeah. We actually needed it today <laughs> within the hour or we weren't survive at all. Yeah. And what Solomon is trying to do is really to save us from this instant gratification right. Game. He doesn't want us to play no. that game. And he comes in a little bit hot in verse six when he calls us lazy bones. Let's go back to that verse for That's a second. Right. Take a lesson from the ants, you lazy bones, he calls us. Learn from their ways and become wise. Yes, he is actually calling us a name here. He's calling us lazy bones. But actually, the Hebrew translation right. that would be a little bit better here is the word sluggard. So he's actually calling us a sluggard, which is 
equally as offensive, I think. Yeah. But here's the idea behind being a sluggard. A sluggard is someone who avoids activity. Hmm. And they avoid activity because what's underlying that is they have a militant avoidance of pain. They don't want to have pain. In yeah. fact, another definition here would be causing little or no pain. And I have to be honest with you. I kind of love the idea of living a life without pain and not just no physical pain, but also no relational pain, no financial pain. Maybe you feel that same way because it is not fun to make financial sacrifices and it is not fun to have painful limitations placed on yourself that are related to your finances. I'm sure that you can relate. But the honest truth is this, that our sluggard lifestyle Great. is really causing big problems when it comes to our finances. In fact, our pain avoidance lifestyle, our unwillingness to act ant-like, and our hmm. unwillingness to practice delayed gratification is really messing with us when it comes to our finances. Yeah, and it happens in a few different ways too, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. We don't want to adapt and adopt the you know, the ant-like lifestyle, right? Yeah. Like for them, they actually do the hard work in the summertime. Mm -hmm. They're doing the hard work now, the day in, day out, little by little hard work to save for winter. But we don't act like that. No, we, we fall into more of the delay, delay gratification. We don't want any part of that because we live like winter's not coming. Yes. And we just spend, 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 spend and you know, we just think it's all going to be okay. Mm -hmm. But then there's this other thing when it comes to us where we don't actually act ant-like is that we see this thing in front of us. Like, you know what? We do want to get healthy or we do want to be debt-free and we see this an enormous task mm -hmm. in front of us, but instead of chipping away at it, yeah. you know, doing this day in, day out, little by little, yeah. principle, we just look at it and say, you know what? I don't want to do that. That's too hard. I'm not going to even try anyway. Yeah. And I think that's why we don't accomplish some of the dreams that we have for our life. Right. So let me ask you this. What is it that you would love to do right now? That's right. Like, would you like to lose 35 pounds or learn a new language? Would you like to learn how to play the guitar or save a bunch of money so that you could retire early at age 62 instead of age 65 or age yeah. 70? Do you want to give 10% of what you make to what God is doing in the world? Or do you want to have a healthy marriage? Yeah, all, those are all great things. Yeah, right? really We think they're incredible things, but those are things that don't change or happen overnight. Mm -hmm. No, they take time. They take the ant-like behavior of choosing to do the things little by Little, honestly, that, that, that's what it's forcing us to do if we want those to happen in our lives. In fact, if we want those things to happen in our lives, we actually have to put aside the 2021 American mindset and mantra, which is, I want it all and I want it now. Now. And guilty, I've said it myself, mm -hmm. right? I want to lose 35 pounds and I want it to happen tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to learn Spanish but I want to be fluent by next Thursday. <laughs> yeah. Right? I want to be debt free, but I don't want to have to do anything to get there. I mean, you can fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. I want blank, but I want it now. Yes. And the problem with that is though, when we start with the end in sight, we mm -hmm. forget what it takes to get there. Yeah, we absolutely do. And that's why this truth is so important. Right. The best outcomes happen right. when we're faithful little by little. And if you haven't written this down yet, definitely write it down. The best outcomes happen when we're faithful little by little. It's every single step that we take. Hmm. It's every decision that we make day by day. It's every grain of sand right. that we're moving in our life. That is why we can't pay off $12,000 in hmm. consumer debt until we begin by paying off just one Dollar. Absolutely. It's what mm -hmm. a good principle and big idea for our message today. So hopefully it's been helpful for you. And we, we don't know where you're at. And we don't know if today you needed to hear from Solomon, <laughs> that you needed to hear like, you know what, I needed that firm teaching that's been a principle that's been you know, applicable for thousands of years. We're not sure where you're at, but there's something else we think we might want to tell you, actually let you hear. It's an inspiring story yeah. uh, from a couple from our Hastings campus who yes. honestly, they adopted the ant-like lifestyle and God did something in their lives that we want to share with you. So I'd love for you to see Matt and Chris's story today. Hi, I'm Krista. And I'm Matt. And we are from Hastings, Minnesota. And we have three boys, ages 10, 7, and 4. We have been going to Crossroads for three and a half years. And this is our story. 
about how we acquired $131,000 in debt and we paid it off in three and a half years. So Krista and I got married in 2006 and right away, um, pretty much right away, we, okay. we actually bought a house in Southeast Minneapolis. Um, it was a fantastic time in our lives. We had a lot of fun. Um, we didn't have a lot of money. We definitely should not have bought a house at that point. <laughs> nope. um, but being naive to life and the process, um, that's what we did. And we don't regret it, but that was another big um, financial challenge and burden that, that we had at the time as well that we were working around. We were, we were aware of our finances and thought about our finances. Yeah. And, you know, more or less thought about our spending, but we weren't uh, we didn't have a plan as far as how we wanted to save our money or, or really even spend our money long term. Yeah, we were not or intentional. A lot of the things that we did um, with our community that we enjoyed was we volunteered a lot. We didn't have a lot of money. Um, like I said, we were living you know, more or less paycheck to paycheck at that point. But we didn't have any kids and <laughs> we were young and energetic and we served a lot in the community um, all over the Twin Cities really, um, really involved with the church we were attending at that, at that time as well as other community things uh, within Minneapolis. With that, with volunteering, we realized how much we couldn't give financially um, to the organizations that we were involved in um, because we were living paycheck to paycheck on it. Sorry, I cry every time I talk about this subject. Um, and so with that, we, in 2011, we, um, we got a video from my cousin and they had said, hey, we're debt free. We kind of sat down at that point and we said, oh my gosh, how can they pay off their debt so quickly? And we did the math and we had $131,000 in debt. And, and that was the first time <laughs> that we really sat down like, uh, and put it all together. So when we took a look at our debt, we broke it down of where it was coming from. Um, Matt and I both were in college, and so we took out student loans for everything. For living expenses, food, tuition, books, you name it. Um, we just figured we would pay it off someday. We had about $80,000 in student loan debt, and then the rest of it was kind of a combination of um, a couple of uh, cars, uh, a little bit of credit card, uh, the second mortgage on top of our first mortgage. We never, we absolutely never felt comfortable with it, um, but we thought it was normal. Everybody had student loans, everybody had car loans, everybody had a credit card, at least that's what we had thought. And um, so although it didn't feel comfortable, it, it felt like that's just kind of what you did as adults. You know, I think having the first kid and then all of a sudden, you know, realizing that we're, you know, our responsibilities are, are more than just us at this point, we knew that we wanted to Set, uh, set a standard and set a lifestyle for our growing family that we were going to talk about money and finances and that debt is, is not, not an option. Once we realized how much debt we had and how quickly we wanted to pay it off, we cut cable, we didn't eat out, we didn't go out and party, you know, with our friends at all. For, we sold a car and, we lived, sold on a car car. and lived on one car for a while. <laughs> and um, we took on other jobs. So we, we, we had our day jobs and then we worked We worked at night. You know, you have to increase your income somehow to be able to tackle this. Um, any sort of birthday money we got, we threw at our debt. Um, any sort of bonus at work, we threw at it. Tax refunds, we threw that at our debt. Um, it wasn't like, hey, we got a you know, a promotion, let's go party yeah. and go on a trip. It was like, we're gonna pay off our debt you know, and get it done. I think the biggest thing is reaching out for help. So you can't practice what you don't know. You can't practice things that you haven't been taught in life. And that was true for us. Mm -hmm. You know, we obviously took on all this debt because we didn't know. We didn't know what the long-term implications would be. There are people um, that teach that teach and facilitate different financial classes, like like we do with uh, Financial Peace University, um, that love to help, and that's you know that's what their calling is 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 to help. If you don't know where those people are, um, you know ask your pastors and see uh, where they can connect in the church community and, and kind of help you out. We're in a much better place than than we were ten years ago. Um, but that's only because we we had family uh, that supported us. We had other friends that We're started this journey thing. with us. Yep. 
um, that we still talk to. And know that it's not gonna, like Matt said, it's not gonna happen overnight to pay off your debt. It does take step by step, little by little, trying to, you know, go after it and and really have that drive. Find your why. What's your long-term goal? Where is God calling you to be? Um, and where does God call your finances to be? And that, that really keeps your motivation going long-term. What a powerful illustration and testimony of what Solomon was teaching us today. Mm -hmm. Like the, the ant-like lifestyle that Matt and Krista adopted to their lives so mm -hmm. that they could get somewhere that they wanted it to be, but they knew it took courage mm -hmm. and then they knew it took day in, day out decisions for them to get there. But they embodied the big idea of today. They sure they, did. They, they really lived out the idea that the best outcomes happen when we are faithful mm -hmm. little by little. Yeah. And that just leaves us with, I think, one really big question, which is what are we going to do with the little bit of time and the little bit of money that we have left while we're living here on earth. Which is why we have a clock, <laughs> a big uh, clock. up here, grandfather <laughs> clock, and we yeah. have a few stacks of $100 bills. We decided to go to the bank and empty our accounts. <laughs> no, actually, they're fake. I promise they're not you. Real, yeah. These are not very real. But what we want to illustrate is this to you. Mm -hmm. All of us actually have this opportunity. Because mm -hmm. all of us have time, and we all of us have some level of resources. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that some of you have more than others. You have more time yep. or more resources than other people. But this is what we all have. We have an opportunity mm -hmm. to ask ourselves, how are we going to steward what, what God's given us? Yes. Like we have this little bit of time and a little bit of money. And what are we going to do with it? In fact, you actually have a, a different word for it. As we were writing the message, you went in this direction. Yeah. I just want to know if, if we're going to be intentional hmm. with the time and the money that we have been given. Or are we going to live in the moment? And I think Solomon actually answer, wants us to answer that question as well. I'll read you just how he wraps up this teaching on the ants in verse 9 of chapter 6. He says, But you lazy bones, how long will you sleep? When will you wake up? And Matt and Krista, it's like they kind of woke up early on in their marriage. They realized they had just a little bit of time and a little bit of money and they didn't want to waste it. Right. And they began that ant-like behavior, you know, putting away money towards their debt little by little. And I'm pretty sure that they're very glad that they did that. Yeah, they were intentional with it, right? Yes, they understood so that, they, that their future, at their family, mm -hmm. and even all he said to their faith had, would come down to how they would end up being is that how they approach these two things. Mm -hmm. What would they do with the little bit of time and the little bit of resources God had entrusted them with? And would they be intentional? Yes. But, but we know their story. We know theirs. Mm -hmm. But we're wondering about yours. Mm -hmm. In fact, we're going to ask you a few questions right now. And the ball's in your court, honestly. We can't force you to do this, but we're just going to ask, would you consider doing them? In fact, you actually can find these questions um, in our CR Crossroads app. We hope you've downloaded it. But the first question is this, is that will you at some point this week, will you at some point sit down and assess where you're at financially? Mm -hmm. Like take a look. Maybe you don't look at your bank account very often, but actually pause sometime this week and look at how you're doing. Good, bad, ugly, in between. I don't know what it is for you, but take a look. Your bank account, your 401k, like what are your resources, story, what are, their, what are your story and your finances saying right now? Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. And if it's not great, if your finances aren't really doing well, they're not thriving, we would say, would you do the hard thing that Matt and Krista did? Yes. And would you take a step in actually addressing them so that they would be in a healthier spot because you did the courageous thing and did something about it this week? Yeah. And will you pray? Because as we try to tackle our finances little yeah. by little and make better decisions day by day, we are definitely going to need God's help, his wisdom, his hmm. support. So will you pray to God about your finances this week? And then here's the last question. Will you sign up? Because we are actually offering yeah. a Financial Peace University small group this spring through Crossroads, yeah. both online and in person. And if you want to experience that peace and that joy, and I'm sure that sense of release Absolutely. that Matt and Krista experienced through paying off their debt, then would you sign up? You can go to cr.life and click groups and you can sign up right now. You'll put your name on an interest list and we'll let you know when that group is going to begin. But will you sign up?
Yeah, we're excited about that. Mm -hmm. And today we want to say this conversation is not always an easy one to have it is when it comes no. to our finances and the little bit of time, a little bit of money God's entrusted us mm -hmm. with. But what we want to do now is not only say thank you for sticking with us, is that we actually <laughs> want to pray for you. Uh, we do, because we not only do we love you, but we actually, we believe in you that you can do what you need to do to help keep it together financially for you and your family in this season. So we're going to pray, yeah. and then we will see you next week. So let's yeah. pray together. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for everyone who is listening, either online or at a campus. We pray, God, that you will speak to them today through this message, that they will be inspired and motivated to tackle their finances little by little and to, to make the difficult choices this week that will pay off really big in the long run. God, we know that you're with us and that you'll help us, and we ask that you would this week. Absolutely. God, we just mm -hmm. also thank you for these principles that, that have been preserved in your word mm -hmm. that we can see and understand and apply to our lives. So God, I ask right now, would you give us all the courage to do that this week? Whether at, wherever we're at financially, God, would you just give us the courage to apply your truth in our lives? Because we know that when we do that, our lives are better and it makes us better at life. So God, thank you for who you are and for how you're moving in our church. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen.